Now, the first observation is a very sober one. We really like to talk about our region as the top of Europe. And of course, we don't just think about it as geographically the top of Europe. We also not just think about the top of Europe as an ambition, but we actually use the term top of Europe as a description of reality. We were the region that was growing the fastest in Europe, and actually we were growing at a high pace even compared to a lot of other regions in the world. That has dramatically changed. We not only have fallen behind the US or North America, we've even fallen behind this year, behind a lot of our European peers. Why has the global crisis hit us so hard? Really disproportionately hard. I think that's a key question that we have to ask. Did we miss out on something? Now the good news is, uh, on the right-hand side from you of the graph, of course, I think the outlook is actually not that bad. It seems like we are going to come back somewhat faster than a lot of other world regions. What might explain that? Well, one factor is actually that we have to look a little bit at the nature of this global crisis. If you look at traditional crises, and this region had its fair share, you know, the Nordic banking crisis, other crises that we have over the time, what really drove those crises was the vertical line, which you might call imbalances. Something was getting out of sync. You know, we had too much credit growth, we spent too much, we didn't save enough. Some kind of imbalance was going there, and ultimately a crisis hit, and uh, we were, you know, you had to adjust to that. If you look at the Baltic Sea region, on that account, we actually look very good. On the aggregate level, there weren't many, uh, many imbalances in our region. Now, we have a lot of countries in our region that had strong imbalances. You know, if you look at the graph, of course, the Baltic countries, of course, Iceland, in fact, also Russia. You know, the aggregate for Russia looks great, but if you look a little bit closer, you find that the private sector, the oligarchs, but also a lot of, of uh, uh, public sector companies have built up huge leverage, huge debt uh, uh, in, in foreign countries. But then this global crisis had a second aspect that we haven't seen so much in the past. And it's really because this crisis started at the heart of the global economy in the United States. This time, it really hit economies that were very open. Now, openness is a good thing. That's part of our competitiveness. That's part of made us strong. But in the short term, that's exactly what made us much more vulnerable to the external, uh, external threat. So in some sense, that we've been hit so hard over uh, by this crisis is both an indication of the weaknesses that we still have in our region. But it's all an, also an indication of the strengths and the, really the potential uh, uh, that you find. Now, how has the region reacted? Well, initially, actually, we didn't react that much because the sense was, you know, this was a problem in the U.S. financial markets. And most of our banks are actually not that engaged in the U.S. You know, the, uh, uh, the one exception, I have to say, as somebody who comes from northern Germany, is uh, the northern German Landesbanken which actually were quite exposed, and they are suffering badly for it. But of course, as this crisis worked through the system, we were getting hit very hard. Uh, and I think, luckily, if you now look at the data, you see that governments in the region have reacted very forcefully. If you look at the fiscal stimulus package, and that's only part of the reaction, we've been reacting stronger than most other parts of Europe. So we actually have gotten our act together. Now, if you look at the graph, of course, graph, of course you see that not all countries reacted very strongly. And that is already pointing out one of the challenges of this crisis. The reaction to the crisis was not only a measure of willingness to act, but also of ability to act. The Baltic countries just didn't have the financial resources to kind of go in with a big stimulus package. The, the, one of the most dangerous aspects of this crisis is that it's going to make the divisions in this region larger. And we really need to figure out how we deal with that, economically, but also politically. Now, how has this all played out uh, in the economic statistics? Well, you know, we actually have to expect that uh, GDP per capita prosperity in our region might drop by almost 5% this year. That's tough, but it also comes on the back of a couple of years of very strong growth. So there's no reason for, dis for despair. I th really think we need to see things a little bit more in the longer-term perspective. If you look more at the pattern of what is generating prosperity, there are actually quite interesting, uh, uh, interesting observations to make. On the right-hand side, you see their productivity. This is where we have taken a big hit. We've taken a big hit because some of our economies, you know, Germany is probably the most extreme example, but most of our economies have tried to really shelter the labor market somewhat, keep people in employment, making sure that you don't lose the competence that exists in companies, 
and rather expect, uh, 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 deal with the productivity uh, fall that, that, that comes in order to adjust for lower demand that is existing. So that is how we as a region have reacted. That gives the potential, if the economy bounces back, we actually will see very high productivity growth uh, uh, to move forward. Um, but uh, that is something that, uh, that, that, that will play out over time. Now, looking a little bit more uh, at, at productivity across the parts of our region, of course, again, what we see is this huge heterogeneity. Now, we know that we are a heterogeneous uh, uh, region, and that's part of our strength. But in the past, we actually see that the, slower uh, the, the, the weaker countries were growing more slowly. So the gap was decreasing. During this crisis, the opposite is true. We'll see that the weaker countries, the countries that are behind, have actually fallen behind much more quickly. That is going to put a stretch on us economically, but it's also going to make it quite hard politically as we move forward. Now then there are a lot of other indicators that are a little bit more long-term and help us to understand the health of the, uh, the temperature, as, as, as Hans said, the temperature of the region. I picked out the investment rate because that's one of the indicators where we traditionally were not quite as good. We we're wondering why, why aren't our companies, you know, if the environment is so good, why aren't they not investing more money? Well, we have a high capital stock, but you still need new machinery to really upgrade and become uh, stronger. Now, over the last years, you know, we were very proud to observe that, you know, finally we seem to have made it. Investment rate was really moving up. We, now again, we see that we are falling behind the EU27. Of course, we're still far behind a lot of other economies in Asia that are developing uh, uh, more dynamically. So the long-term challenges that we had, they are still with us. Uh, we haven't really lost that much position, but we're kind of sliding a little bit on patenting. Uh, we have trouble attracting foreign direct investment. We're very kind of, we have a solid position on all of these indicators, but there is almost a slow trend downward, and that's something that we need to deal with. Now, looking at these economic outcomes, what does this mean for regional cooperation? You know, there's lots of stuff that needs to be done by the prime, minister here, the prime ministers here in their own countries, but what can we actually do together? Well, the first issue really is this crisis is making the heterogeneity in our, our economies even more hardly felt than ever before. That's troubling. For an economist, you know, that's great because there are trade of, uh, gains of trade and all of that, but politically, it's actually very hard. Uh, it is hard because what we see is that people perceive reality in very different ways. I looked at some of the survey data, and what you find is that people in the Nordic countries, you know, feel that the crisis is almost over, we are going in, the, in, the, in a brighter future. If you talk to somebody from the Baltics, from Latvia, from other countries in the Baltics, the opposite is true. There is deep despair and a, and a deep frustration about what the future might hold. Now, for the politicians, how are we going to organize joint action if people see reality so differently? Second challenge is that actually a lot of the changes that have to be taken, a lot of the policies that were critical in this time are national in nature. Monetary policy, fiscal policy, all of these acts are national or EU level or global. It's kind of harder to see what role the, the, the Baltic Sea region plays, uh, plays in this. All of this doesn't make regional collaboration, the reason we are here today and tomorrow, less important, but it certainly makes it harder. It makes it harder to sustain politically. Now let's look a little bit more at the medium term, a uh, topic that we have uh, uh, usually spend our time with at the Baltic Development Forum summits. Now if you look at underlying competitiveness, really the business environment, the structures that are around companies and help them to become more productive or innovative, there aren't that major uh, changes over the last year or two. These things don't change that quickly. So you wouldn't expect the crisis to have a major impact on that. We're still very strong in our companies. The company structure is very high. We have a lot of very successful global multinational companies from our region. And we're also very strong in public institutions. In fact, we are one of the few regions in the world that has this combination, strong government and strong private sector, kind of playing different but complementary roles. But we also continue to have our challenges. Now, one of the challenges uh, is this little rat box down there, capital markets. We'll talk a lot about this at the summit because we have seen uh, how, despite the, the increasing integration of financial markets, this continues to be a challenge. How do we manage this financial market, this emerging integrated Baltic Sea region financial market better. One of the key topics to deal with. The other one continues to be what we call context for firm strategy and rivalry, kind of the context for competition. Now on one of these aspects, we're actually very strong. We're very open to foreign trade and investment. 
We have a very plain level, uh, uh, level playing field for companies to compete in our region. But at the same time, of course, we have high taxes, and we actually still have quite a lot of business rules and regulations that are uh, inhibiting business more than they should be. Well, the World Bank is coming out every year with their assessment of uh, doing business, as they call it, rules and regulation affecting business. We're kind of doing okay overall, 32. It's actually not quite as strong as we are in other dimensions, but it's still respectable. But there are areas in which we continue to be weak, and there's really no good reason for it. Let me pick one example. We have over the last years again and again talked about entrepreneurship. Now, starting a business, the rules and regulations for starting a business is an area where we actually, again, have lost position. We haven't lost position because we've made it much harder for businesses in our region. But I work in many other countries around the world, and this is one area where there's very aggressive action by our competitors. We have been standing still, while others have been really moving very aggressively. We need to look at that if we want to be serious about becoming a more entrepreneurial society. Another topic that we've often talked about is clusters. We actually are a region that's quite specialized. You do find different types of clusters in different parts of the regions. IT here, telecom there, forest products, uh, transportation. Uh, it's a very healthy mix of things. But we are a region of small markets. We are a region of small economies. For these clusters to really gain world-class strength, we need more integration, we need better collaboration. That has been on the agenda. It continues to be on the agenda of our work. Now, what does this analysis suggest for the things that we need to do? It's actually quite a boring story. A lot of the things have been on that agenda for a while. Regional integration, it actually is more important than ever. If we want to address our lack of attractiveness for foreign investors, if we want to make it easier for entrepreneurs, we need to create a larger market. We can only create a larger market if we remove the barriers that still exist. The EU is not sufficient to do that. We need to work closer together within this region to, do, uh, to move forward. Moving towards innovation, well, clearly we can only gain on productivity. Uh, we don't have the natural resources. There are no other reasons for our productivity and prosperity in the long term. We've made some success, but we need to make sure that we don't lose position. I'm worried about our position in patenting slowly going down. It's not going down in absolute levels, but I currently spend six months in Asia, and there it is rapidly going up. So we need to make sure that we don't uh, 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 a looser space. The third element is actually a new one, and I, I must admit that's something that we haven't focused on sufficiently in the past. We need to become better at a, as a region to deal with these external shocks. As an open region, these shocks will come again in the future. This will not have been the last one. We need to be better prepared, and there are lots of things to do, not only in the financial areas that are crucial for that. So this is what we ought to do. What are we doing? Well, actually, we are doing quite a lot. If you look at collaboration in the region, you see a high level of activity, many organizations that work, uh, and they haven't stopped because of the financial crisis. I, do see, I, I don't see any indications that we're slowing down in our collaboration efforts. What is interesting is that while in the past we often talked about the alphabet soup of organizations, we are actually getting better organized. If you look at the action priorities of our main institutions, they are centered on innovation. They are centered on the environment. They do tackle the right kind of topics. And the EU Baltic Sea region strategy has had a very important role in that. It focused people's minds, and it, in a bottom-up way, kind of got us focused on the same type of issues. Now, let me talk a little bit more about the EU Baltic Sea region strategy. Now, you know, it's very early days. It hasn't even been approved by the European Council. Hopefully, that will happen at the end of this month. Um, but, you know, what is this track record so far? So I've tried to think a little bit about some questions that you might ask about the strategy. Is it looking at the right questions? And I think the answer is yes. The Commission asked around this region in a, in a very elaborate process, and you see all the main challenges that we face in front of us. Is it providing new solutions? Well, I think, to be fair, not yet. You know, if you look at the project proposals and things, it's not something that is completely new. Maybe that shouldn't be expected, but it's important to be realistic about it. Does it provide new and better ways to deal with those problems? Well, maybe. But it's not clear yet. There are organizational structures, there's a follow-up process, there are lead projects. So we could see some more integration, but it's not yet the big solution. It's still work in progress. Is it a better model for Europe? I think it can be. Europe has a true problem in terms of our integration philosophy. And we are 
working on a new model here in the Baltic Sea region that I think can truly be interesting for your colleagues in, uh, in, in the European Council.